So Alex had something that came up. He can't join. So thank you for having everyone add their notes to the agenda. I think um, what we wanted to cover today was to go over um, the template that Luis was working on, if he happens to join, and then also the database paper that Sobu was working on. And, and if there are other agenda items that people want to add, please go ahead and add them here. Let me repost the link on the chat. For the database? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I had it down here further. I was going to grab it as well. I'll add it to the agenda. Oh, cool. And did I pronounce your name right? Is it Sugu? Is that? Uh, yeah, Sugu. Is that right? OK. Yeah. It's uh, S-U-G-U or S-O-U-G-O-U. All the way. <laughs> OK. And is Luis on? I wasn't sure we'll be able to do the second one. I think he might be on PortWorks webinar or something today. I'll add in this. All right. So I think we can go ahead and get started. It's five after. So we all want to, I'm not sure I can record. Does Alex generally record, Steve? It's already, it's already recorded. It already, it already started. You guys already started it. We're on the ball. All right. So let's, can everyone get into that white pot, white paper document? Actually, that, uh, that document, uh, yeah. I don't think has it. Uh, I wrote a separate uh, doc for, uh, to be later added to that document. Let me get the link for that. Did you put it in the chat? I don't see it. It looks like that doc uh, requires permissions that I don't have. Uh, I'm trying to get the link. Hold on. OK. Yeah. OK. If you want to put it in the agenda, um, yeah. you have edit permissions, that'd be great. If not, just put it in the chat, and I'll add it there. Uh, where was it? Oh, here. And I can only stay for half an hour because I have to catch a plane, but Quinton should be here by then and he's going to take over for the second part of the meeting. My computer is refusing to move forward. Oh no. <laughs> well, we can go over these um, process reviews for the TOC if you want while you're doing that. Yeah, it'll just take me only a minute. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to wait for you? Or uh, I'll, I'll open it soon. Okay, we'll wait. We can be patient. <laughs> there you go. I found it. Great. Go. See it. See a storage. Uh, do I have? Oh, I don't have edit permissions. Uh, so, okay, just go ahead and put it in the chat and I'll add it to the document then. Yeah, the white paper link opens for me. Let me see. Oh, I think yeah. he said it's I'll not in there though. Put it on chat. In a, another doc that he wrote separately. Yeah, I, I just okay. pasted it on chat. Here it is. Great. I've added that to the doc. Can everyone get inside there? It says it's the same thing, database edits, so it's a different copy of it. I'm in there. Yeah. Yes, I'm in. OK. Everyone else can get in. I think generally yeah. a common problem with these SIGs and working groups is that the permissions generally are tied to the mailing list of every wow. member. But if you have multiple yeah. Google accounts and end up logged into the wrong one, that's right. a common problem for not being able to get in. 
I think the permission uh, is restricted. It's not uh, like I cannot uh, write to that doc, the agenda doc. Yeah, I think that's locked down. I had to yeah. have Alex give me direct permission, so. Um. I believe uh, you should have full permissions on on this. I made it. Yeah, uh, yep. I can, yeah. yeah. Uh, Looks like I can. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so pardon me, I wasn't able to make the last call. Did we get partially through the stock or do we want to start at the top? Uh, I, uh, this is the first time. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the one thing I did was uh, uh, because uh, key value stores and databases have similarities, those parts I'm not covering, I just said, look at key value stores for the trade-offs. So I'm only, um, so it's kind of additive. The stuff that I added here is things to consider beyond what you would uh, otherwise think about when uh, moving a key value store into uh, cloud storage. Okay, sorry, I'm just reading through that. Do we wanna say that every database vendor is required to provide drivers that conform to these APIs? I mean, you could be, if you wanna be cloud native and have the interoperability, but uh, this is just the old, uh, That's the old one. yeah, the old one, the, J the ODBC, JDBC, uh, right. uh, that kind of stuff. Actually, the newer database vendors, I don't know if they do provide these things. Like, I think uh, Spanner, for example, doesn't, I don't think it provides any standard API. Yeah, that's why I think that's maybe an inaccurate statement. Yeah, um, you can say is uh, um, encouraged to provide. Drivers? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, there you go. Okay. There we go. I, yeah, that's much nicer way to put it. Okay. And do we consider no SQL databases to be database then? Because this one with the heading of databases, we're yeah, saying- Yeah, the key value okay. stores are the no SQL ones. So All that's right. the previous section, uh, section nine in, the, in that document. Okay. And actually I uh, later noticed that uh, uh, TIDB might have been mentioned in uh, section nine. So we should remove that because uh, TIE KV would be uh, I think uh, it wasn't TIDB, it might have been Cockroach. Let me check. Uh, where was that? Uh, Are you looking back at the old document? Can yeah, in the old document. Um, in section nine. Oh, this is a big document. <laughs> yeah, so in section nine, where did I see? Ah, uh, yeah, so Spanner, Cockroach, TyKV, FaunaDB provide distributed key value store API. Uh, so I believe Spanner and Cockroach DB are more databases than key value stores. So you think they still belong here? I'm highlighting in the doc if people can see that. Yeah, so I wasn't sure uh, whether we were restricted to just open source or uh, anything that's considered generally uh, popular, uh, like popular nowadays. So I, I, was, I wasn't sure whether Cockroach TV should be mentioned, but then I saw it mentioned in section nine, but that might have also been written before Cockroach TV decided to change their license. Uh, it's not considered open source anymore by many standards. Okay. Um, 
I guess I'd like to hear what people's opinion is on that. I mean, I would think we would probably limit it to open source um, just because that's would be the view of the CNCF community. Um, but I don't know if we're just trying to cover generalized. I think if you do that, you should change the title of that section 10 to open source databases just to communicate that. That's a good idea. Reduce the scope of coverage. Because there are people who choose to put even commercial software in containers. Um, you know, it, I, I don't think the CNCF is going to accept a non-open source as a project or uh, promote it aggressively, but still the user community sometimes is in search of help in terms of how to do them, even if it's only to support a legacy application. Yeah, we had a similar discussion in the context of the white paper uh, last year, and uh, uh, the, the topic came up in the context of like object stores, and people were wondering whether we could mention things like S3, etc. And the decision we came to at that point was that it does make sense to mention the non-open source stuff, particularly where they are like household names in a particular category. In an Oracle database would be one perfect example, of course. Um, and that we don't, you know, pretend they don't exist or anything, but we don't necessarily go into great detail on them and focus, you know, more of the attention on the open source ones. Make sense? It does. And not only that, there, there's been sort of a few instances of people converting from open source licenses to other licenses. And it, it would be, um, you know, a mission to try to keep up to date on all of these and then go back and retroactively edit documents. Well, yeah, so we should addendum it to say open source databases and I mean, cockroach is a perfect example of that, Steve. So maybe delete it from here. Or yeah, should we not? Either that or we can do, uh, we can just leave it as databases, in which case we should add spanner. Um, Quentin, what uh, do you think? some paper we that also talks about uh, uh, things like Aurora as new SQL, but I don't know if I agree with that point of view <laughs> because it's not, uh, but definitely not cloud native, so. Sorry, I, I joined the conversation late, so I'm, I'm lacking a little bit of context, but I, I think I think where we landed last time with a similar conversation was essentially if, if there are names of commercial things or things that are not open source or things that are debatably open source, that we omit from the paper that causes confusion. And so therefore we should mention them. Uh, and if there is, you know, debate about whether something is open source, we should just say, you know, it is uh, not universally uh, agreed upon whether this should be considered open source or something along those lines, if that is the case. <clears throat> um, and uh, definitely, you know, cockroach DB is, is, you know, verging on a household name. Name. And I, I don't know whether the debate was whether or not that is open source, but irrespective of whether it is, it should be mentioned on the basis that it's an open, uh, that, that it is a uh, uh, household name in that category. Um, or we could change it saying that, uh, 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 the, I guess, yeah, that's true. Uh, I was thinking maybe we can uh, call it out that Cockroach DB is op uh, source available, but I don't know if that, and then we go into explaining all these differences, which is not the focus of this paper. Yeah, I wouldn't get too hung up about the definition of open source. I think that is, a, as you say, a topic for a different discussion and we could put a reference if there is a sort of reasonably good yeah. reference to the debate, we can put a link in there and say that, you know, depending on what definition of open source you use, some of these may or may not be considered open source, something along those lines. I think it's better to, uh, to not be that strict. And what I would prefer to do instead is just add Spanner also into this list. So you can say with this uh, Spanner, TiDB and Cockroach provide relational features and just leave it at that. Should we just add, like add a one paragraph kind of categorize those two like the uh, open source ones and the non open source ones so that just at one place we show whether they are open source or not.
I think people will figure it out when they go look for it, right? They they'll realize that ah okay, TidyB is open source, not Cockroach DB. Das is open source. The spanner no source available. I think those. Uh, I would I would suggest against that. I would I would make it very upfront here. So uh, I don't think we should expect people to go digging through websites to figure out whether or not things are open source. I think that's important enough. We should put it right here in the paper. How about just an appendix at the end or something that keeps track of this? I, I don't like the idea of it scattered throughout the document as each thing comes up because it's tough to maintain. True. What, what, is, the, uh, what is the thinking against making a clear distinction in the document? Is, is the problem that there isn't, that it's not? Oh, I, I don't mind putting it somewhere in the document, but if we do it on every instance of a name of an open source entity, that's a pain to keep up. If we do it on the first one, it's still tough to find them all. Uh, so perhaps an appendix at the end. Yeah, or, but no, or maybe some of the symbol. Yeah, or just a crazy thought I had was, you know, maybe just change the typefaces, you know, put non-open source stuff in italics or something. And so that it's very clear when you're reading the document, when you refer to a non-open source or an open source one, just, just a thought. Yeah, or or just some sort of footnote symbol that the footnote says, you know, not a standard open source license or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, we've probably beaten this one to death. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should. So in which case we, are we going, uh, so we are, are we leaning towards keeping these names? for now and then qualifying them if needed. Yes, I think we're going to be. Um, so we should change the title back to just databases then. Yeah, it's right. okay. done. And I will add cockroach here for now. And then we can, you know, the one, the easier thing maybe is uh, provide links to uh, TyDB and with tests and no links to cockroach and uh, sorry not cockroach spanner provide no links for spanner or cockroach sorry i came in a little late what document are we talking about oh it's in the chat uh luis oh, it's in the agenda as well uh here okay thank you Uh, yeah, TidyB is Apache license too. I think they are pretty clean. Uh, so we can maybe provide links to Vitesse and TidyB and no links to Spanner and Cockroach. What's the thinking be behind some with links and some without? Uh, the fact that uh, there is uh, Cockroach DB is not considered uh, open source and there is no, uh, and Spanner is not open source. I, I would either put links to everything or links to nothing. And yeah. I would put a footnote if something is totally not open source or if there's some controversy around the open source license. You could just put a footnote with a link to something saying. Yeah, that was Stephen's uh, suggestion to have an appendix saying. Just one thing is I, I try to understand as the Cloud Native Foundation, part of the Linux Foundation, and, and again, I'm looking at this from the big picture kind of thing. Uh, I'm not me to say it like, um, anyway. So I'm trying to think that we should be very open source friendly. And, and thinking in that model, we should not even have, in my opinion, it shouldn't probably have at all anything with that closed source at all in the paper. Because then that becomes a marketing thing. So instead... Well yeah, the, yeah that is what I was afraid of is somebody yeah. else with commercial interest say why didn't you mention us right? yeah so so I think we should focus very very clearly on something that's open source and anything that's closed source is just not in the paper in paper at all uh, again I feel that way because we are part of the Linux Foundation 
Now, if we were some other type of foundation that dealt with both closed and open source projects, then then I'll be fine. But I think a part of the Linux Foundation, I feel we are very, should be very clear that we are looking at only open source uh, projects. And yeah. Yeah. I, I agree, but I mean, how often do we plan on updating this doc as well? Because at one time, Cockroach was open as well. So should we even mention names in here? Because that then there puts a requirement on us to make sure that these are updated. I think I think one can get around that by saying at time of writing. Yeah. Um, and okay. a, a version two. Getting, I think Cockroach, you can if it was open source one time, you can go back to the open source version. I'm sure, right? Yeah. But but regarding we, we had this whole debate in the in the white paper, Luis. I don't, I don't know if you remember it. The the problem with your approach. So firstly. To be clear, we do not intend to be exhaustive about listing all non-open source or all open source uh, databases. Um, and we decided to list a few closed source ones in particular uh, where they provide useful information to contextualize people's brains. So when you're talking about object stores <coughs> and S3, people understand what S3 is, they understand it's, it's the definitive open, uh, uh, object store. Uh, it was the first one and it sort of defines the category. Um, and so we mentioned it explicitly. Um, and I think there are other categories that have similar things. We did not exhaustively mention every single possible closed source object store, but we did mention S3 and, and uh, maybe another one I don't remember. And I think we should be consistent. I think personally that that principle is sound, and I think we should continue with that. Well, um, in the S3 specifically, it's because I feel that S3 itself is becoming a protocol more than yeah. the than the implementation. So when we say S3, we mean the protocol today, and uh, we mean the APIs. So we're gonna put Minio, for example, and we say S3, right? So. Uh, I feel that that was okay, but I feel that if we start moving towards the needle to us that location, we, we may find, I guess this is my opinion, we may mm -hmm. find that it may become difficult. I'm trying to pull the needle back to the open source only model and we can definitely represent that. Yeah, I but tend now, to agree with Quentin where I think we don't want to promote the non-open source, but mentioning them if it's a just a, commercial reality that they're popular and people will want to run them uh, in containers is is okay so long as you don't cross the line into promotion and you indicate that these are in a different category. Yeah, just raising my opinion, that's all. Yeah, I mean, Spanner is another good example. Spanner was, you know, there was a lot of publicity around it. There were papers published, uh, it was the thing that started a lot of this discussion around distributed databases, etc. Uh, it happens not to be open source as far as I'm aware. Uh, and it's now actually, I believe, available on Google Cloud as a commercial offering. But I think it should definitely be here. I mean, everybody, just about everybody has heard of Spanner and, and it helps contextualize what the other things are and which, what the categories are. Anyway, just my opinion, yeah. I guess we'll get to visit each one as they come. Uh, I didn't quite understand that. Visit what, sorry? Uh, visit, like, you know, we'll talk about each one as they come in the, in a paper, for example, like we're doing right now with the database one. I, I'm just saying we don't need to, like, make a blanket statement. As they come in the, in the paper, we'll, we'll look at each one and we'll make a judgment on each. I think we do need to have a principle on which the judgment is made. And the principle I'm proposing is that where it is a name of a commercial product, which is uh, reasonably well known and helps to uh, contextualize people's thinking, uh, then we should mention it. We should not try to be com comprehensive. Um, and we, yeah, that, that's the basic principle. The basic principle. Uh, yeah, I find both sides of the argument valid. I don't know which way, <laughs> which way to lean towards. <laughs> so the other, the other side, just to be clear, is to, is to not mention anything that's not open source. 
yeah yeah i don't know they they both have their merits yeah okay. and, and again what like, i'm trying to say is that if we were not part of the linux foundation i'd be all for it but being part of it i feel that we should be very strongly focused on open source projects Maybe we, we should table this. Uh, we, we can have the discussion separately rather than uh, spend the next half hour on it. <laughs> I, I can understand both sides of the argument. Maybe we should just table it. Either have it in the document in comments or, or a follow up discussion specifically on this topic. Okay. So we've changed it back to databases. We're going to leave this in here for now. Luis, if you want to add your comments into the side, that's fine. So we can come back I to it. I will also add that uh, if we decide to remove cockroach, we should also remove it from section nine. Okay, I'm just going to add a comment here. Unless Luis was going to add a comment. Uh, Drive that or no. Whatever you let yeah. me yeah. <laughs> let me know what to do. I'll do it. Okay, I'll just add it in. Um, <laughs> Aaron, I think you said you wanted to run off the report now. Uh, did you? Yeah, uh, I got to catch my plane. Um, I'll finish okay. this. Was there anything in particular left on the agenda after this that we wanted to cover? Just so I don't drop the ball. Uh, Luis's template he was working on, and then. You could talk more about what we talked about yesterday with the sandbox draft, but I'm sure you haven't been able to go through it. So I, maybe we could table that oh, to the next. Okay, we'll just put it on the ask people to look through it. Uh, is, is it available, or would you like to make it available more broadly, yet? Or, or? yes, let me do. Uh, no, I think I'd like you guys to review it first. I was hoping. All right, we, we'll try and get okay. it out later this week. Let's say. Cool. Perfect. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. I got a jet. Literally. No so. Thanks. 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 Aaron. Bye. I can't uh, edit the agenda. Oh, I can fix that. Sorry. Uh, there were some uh, strange events with people putting strange things in CNCF documents. So we All right. got a little bit more uh, <laughs> pedantic about it. No problem. Uh, I, I can give that to you. What is your email address? Um, I'm requesting access right now. Make uh, it easier for you. Buried somewhere in my email. Okay, I'll I'll see if I can it's find. It's LuisaPortworks.com. Okay. But um, one second, one second, one second. Okay, yeah, you should have access to it. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, we derailed your review a little bit there. Uh, Subu, do you want to continue? Is someone talking? I don't see, I'm not hearing anything. Oh, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I was saying, would you like to continue? Sorry, we hijacked your, uh, your document review. Do you want to continue? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, actually, people were just reading and uh, uh, commenting. I wasn't uh, walking anyone through. OK. Yeah. So I'll wait for comments.
So any, any other uh, sections of the white paper, we uh, kind of broke it into categories and then we discussed along various axes. Uh, and this is just from memory. I've just read your document now. Sorry, Sue. Um, <clears throat> one we had, you know, the distributed versus centralized, etc. Um, and secondly, we had the relative properties, availability, scalability, performance, etc. Um, sort of sketched out in a, in a sort of summary table. Is that something you considered for this or? Essentially yeah, so what I've, uh, so if you look at the paragraph after, uh, uh, after the mention of the databases, uh -huh. uh, because key value stores and databases uh, share similar uh, usage of how they, um, similar way, um, use storage similar in similar ways, all the trade-offs that apply to key value stores apply to databases also. So I just said, look at uh, the section 9.4 for that. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Are there any uh, additional considerations around transactions uh, and those kinds of things? From memory, most of these databases support some form of multi-operation transactions where key value stores often don't or typically don't. That's a good point. Uh, I uh, We could get into that because uh, different systems offer different trade-offs based on the type of transactions they support. But I uh, even I'm not too sure about, uh, uh, it'll, it'll require the, uh, we can say that uh, these provide, these, day, these systems provide a spectrum of uh, trade-offs between uh, consistency and availability. Uh, but there are like very strange nuances uh, about <laughs> like, for example, Spanner has one uh, very different transaction model. I believe um, Cockroach is uh, very, very strict acid. Yes. Uh, and then uh, TyDB may offer uh, trade-offs. Vitesse also offers trade-offs. So it's uh, it's all over the map. So I don't know if we can... Um, it, we should definitely not get into the details because that itself is a huge, is a, like people have each of those things have were covered in like multiple blogs and papers. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. I feel like it should be more like a. I, I didn't mean to torjology finish first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's all I was going to mention. Yeah, it, I completely agree. If we start getting too deep into the details, we're going to start creating white papers for each one of these companies. So uh, I think with, uh, in, I think the goal really is to get enough information for the user to then read those white papers, and understand them, right? And not really to describe each one. Uh, it, right, we, need, right. we need to kind of give them, like if we were creating, if this was an engineering school, we did, this would be the one-on-one of databases, right? And they would read it and it would be a true, document that would live uh, a long lifetime because it kind of describes what are they used for and what, you know, what are some of the models. And then from there, they can then understand the, the specific product, right? Um, it, it's just my suggestion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I can do is uh, I can uh, stay away from specific uh, features offered by the databases, but I can cover about uh, which parts of ACID uh, these uh, systems uh, make trade-offs on. Yeah, so, perfect. Uh, most of them uh, go um, trade-off between atomicity and isolation. And I can mention that. I can write a short paragraph about that. Yeah. Hey, Suku, are, yeah, you cover, uh, are you going to cover other type of databases like Cassandra? That's also open source, right? Uh, Cassandra is, uh, uh, many people think of it as still a key value store. Uh, key value I, store, is that? Yeah. Uh, so I think it fits better in section nine. Okay. I think we, did we, did we, we left we, it out of there for, to, did to we have assume that, there? that it would be in the database section. Sorry, carry on, Chip. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, okay, so looks like. I don't think it it's is, mentioned okay. there. Oh, it yeah. is mentioned there. Actually, I saw it. Okay, so it's here actually. It's, oh, it um, is? Yeah, it's on um, okay. page, which page is this? I'm not sure which page this is, but it's there. It's Cassandra, HBase. Oh, okay. 
I think it's ambiguous as to whether it's a database or a key value store. And I, I, I certainly think a lot of people have in their heads that it's a NoSQL database. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, you're wrong, really, but, but, but I think that's a common understanding. So at the very least, we can just put a reference in both sections. We can say, put it in here. If, if people don't see it in here, they'll say, why the hell did you, they not mention Cassandra under databases? Hello? 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 Yes, we can hear you. Hello. We can hear you. <laughs> Maybe you can't hear us. Um, Sugu, can you hear me? Oh, I disconnected. Oh, bummer. Okay, let's wait for him to reconnect. Uh, Luis, just to, to get back to your point about leaving out the details, I, I agree. The details. Oh, sorry, I got disconnected. Uh, were you saying anything uh, the last two, uh, last minute or so? No, we, were, we actually noticed you getting disconnected and we, we waited for you. Um, okay. I'm just going to respond to Sugu's point about uh, not getting into the details uh, of the specific projects. And I, I agree 100%. We can't, we can't go into detail about every one of the projects. What we definitely want to do is, I mean, I think the crux of, of the whole issue is this trade-off between essentially strict acid and uh, isolation and various other things. Um, and I think we have to deal with that in, in a reasonable amount of detail in its generality, that there are these fundamental trade-offs that all of these databases make um, and what the spectrum of trade-offs is. And we could even, um, just taking the CNCF databases as an example, uh, TIDB and Vitesse, we could point out where those fall you know, on the spectrum. And, and they do, you know, they're both configurable and they both have, you know, con configurable trade-offs, but in general, they, they fall somewhere on that spectrum. Uh, I think that would be very useful. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's a very good idea. I can add that. And then as for the Cassandra, my, my personal feeling is that it is, it, you're right, it is ambiguously a key value store or a database. There's definitely a lot of people who think of it or have read about it as a, no SQL database. So I think we should mention it here, even if it's just to say we dealt with it in the key value store section. See there. <laughs> we didn't forget about it here. Um, I think uh, uh, the, the, I think many of these key value stores uh, are beginning to add transactions as, as one of their core features. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the reason, that is the bigger reason why they are calling themselves a database. Uh, in that case, it would actually push Cassandra more towards a key value store that supports transactions. Um, um, okay, uh, well, in, the, in that case, do we, 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 we uh, the, other, the way I would put it is I would uh, extend section nine and say that uh, key value stores are now beginning to add uh, uh, transaction support to their uh, systems and are beginning to uh, like um, get closer to the features of a database. That's a good idea. And, and maybe just make it very clear where we drew the line in our paper you know, we, we're dealing with some things and calling them databases and some things and calling them key value stores. And as you say, there's a bit of a blurry line between the two. Um, so maybe we just need to make a statement as to where we artificially drew that line for the purposes of this paper. So I think the line would be, in my eyes, uh, being able to use, uh, being able to speak pure SQL with the database, right? Where that's, I think that's where databases come from where you connect and then just send SQL commands and the database does everything for you. Well, I, th I think there might be people who disagree with you on that. <laughs> I mean, first of, all, first of all, relational databases are only, you know, one kind of database historically. There were many before them, uh, network databases and all sorts of others, object stores, True, yeah. object databases. So, yeah. um, so that, that's the one point. And the other point is that even within relational databases, you know, SQL is, is not a given either. Um, so 
I think that would be a little bit of a contentious statement to make. It may, maybe a little Vitesse centric. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, yeah, I believe I'm pretty sure. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Spanner may be it may be the only one that uh, doesn't understand pure SQL. Uh, I think there are some things you have you need to call into APIs for. I'm pretty sure uh, Cockroach, TyDB, and Vitesse do uh, full SQL. Uh, but yeah, I think the lines are blurring now. Uh, there's, uh, there's, the, it's becoming a spectrum from key value store to yeah. uh, your database. Um, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I mean, we can just add uh, Cassandra uh, saying that Cassandra can be uh, considered by, de depending on how you look at it, Cassandra can be considered a key value store or a database. Yeah. Yeah, if we if you go by the pure relational database um, uh, theory, uh, most purists will reject. I think pretty much all these systems as pure databases. <laughs> as relational databases, absolutely, and, and yeah. I think relational databases are one kind of database. Uh, right, even right. If all the you know all the contention around distributed and and NoSQL and all of that stuff, but that that distinction existed long time ago. Yeah, yeah. In the nineties we had, you know, object relational mappings, ORMs and all these kind of things, and they they in fact don't even explicitly support an an SQL. Right. They, they provide an object interface. Uh, not not in the sense of uh, blob stores or um you know, yeah. type stuff, but but actual just you know they tried to design a language called OQL. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying they do exist and they are databases yeah, <laughs> and they're yeah. not relational. <clears throat> and the same goes for hierarchical databases and network databases. And I mean, there, there are many of them outside of the relational database family. And they, they definitely are databases. Yep. In people's minds. <clears throat> cool. So in my notes, I have, uh, I will add Cassandra, uh, maybe with an asterisk, uh, with saying that, uh, there are systems like, uh, there are some key value stores that are uh, beginning to look more like databases. Uh, Cassandra is one such example. I think I'll add that. Sounds good. Uh, and then I will cover, uh, add a paragraph that covers the trade-offs uh, that databases make uh, about uh, ACID versus availability. Sounds good. Sorry, Shing, I think I might have interrupted you. Did you want to add something? Oh, no, I'm all set. I think uh, uh, Suku said he's going to add uh, something about Cassandra, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and a section on, and the section on the trade-offs uh, that people make with ACID. Okay, yeah, thanks. And Luis, I think I might have interrupted you too. <laughs> Luis uh, chatted saying that he has to uh, drop off. Oh, okay. This is good feedback. Thank you, and, and sorry it didn't come earlier. I actually only came, came across this paper. I was on vacation when you wrote most of this stuff and I kind of lost a few weeks of my life while I was on vacation, so I'm still busy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the acid part, I completely forgot to think about. That's mm -hmm. definitely an important part to add. Um, I mean, we are uh, thinking beyond that. Uh, the other thing that's common is uh, being able to provide table joins and stuff, but I don't think, I think that part can be left out. Yeah, even that's um, debatable at the risk of dragging this out too much, but. <laughs> I mean, one of, if you just zoom out of the detail, I think our, one of our um, responsibilities here is to educate people as to the spectrum and differences between all these things that people call databases. 
yeah and, and focus on the important ones so so obviously you know consistency uh, all of that stuff the asset stuff is is very important and some of the things people call databases particularly in the cloud native world do have them uh, spanner and uh, cockroach come to mind uh, and some of the and TIDB for that matter and some of them definitely do not have them and I think this is part of what causes all the confusion in this general storage space but in particular in the so-called cloud databases space is is how big those gaps between things that people call databases really are. And, and some of them, are, you know, obviously the, the projects and the products with gaps like lack of acid, for example, or lack of uh, consistency in general, uh, they don't exactly advertise what they're missing. Uh, and so people really have to go and dig around and, and figure this stuff out for themselves. So, so what we're trying to do is help people not have to do all that homework. Yeah. Uh, and in one place say, these are the, you know, these are the properties that can be present in a cloud database. Uh, if you, if you choose these properties, you typically can't get these other properties because they're inconsistent. We've got the capital. Right, right. All these things. Yeah. Um, and, and these are the trade-offs that, that have to be made. They're not, you know, flaws in a particular engineering team's thinking they're just fundamental trade-offs um, and yeah <laughs> pick which one so you speaking want. of i will also add uh, the other consistency trade-off which is the read after write consistency which yeah i mean every one of these fields is actually a whole nightmare in itself there are some sections on these things uh, in in the rest of the white paper and you can refer to them where possible there's, there's for example i wrote a specific section on consistency i think and we can expand that if you if you have some more thoughts on it Oh yeah, I can. Uh, that may be actually a good idea because uh, that's a, it. Uh, because some of those things apply to other systems too. I think the way I would do it is uh, do the read after write consistency as a generic section because that applies to uh, multiple other yeah. data stores, but ACID specifically to databases because they are kind of you don't talk about ACID if you are not talking about a database. Yes, you, you tend to talk about parts of it sometimes, like, you know, object stores have a concept of atomicity sometimes. But yeah. yes, I agree. As a, as a group of four properties, they usually apply to databases. Yeah. So I will, uh, I will then add a section on, uh, I will take a look at the consistency section and see if uh, that can be enhanced to cover uh, read after write. Yeah, it's, it's not very comprehensive. I wrote it in a, in a rush and the main aim was just to tell people that consistency means a whole lot of things. So don't, uh, don't believe that you understand it until you've read all of these various papers about consistency. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but uh, if you want to, if you want to add uh, some detailed stuff there or, or some more stuff about read after write, I think that would be valuable. Sounds good. I should uh, start taking notes now. <laughs> Sorry, we could have done that too. Um, I think the last items on the agenda were all well, mostly Luis, and he's so we'll pick those up next time. Um, I'm actually about to run out of battery here, so let me just grab a charger once. Okay, so I think we have two more items on the agenda that I'm aware of, and sorry, I, I dropped in late, so I hope this is up to date. So Luis uh, has been doing some work uh, on various papers, which we'll ask him to give us a sort of an update next time. Uh, the other thing we have been doing, and Aaron in particular, has been, uh, there's been a little bit of uh, concern, I think, about inconsistency of dealing with projects that apply to the CNCF. Uh, and I think particularly at the sandbox level, there's been uh, some complaints leveled and so I think uh, it would be useful for us to put together a detailed 
uh, workflow, this is how you apply to the to the uh, sandbox, and and this is exactly what the responsibilities of the TOC are, specifically with respect to timelines. You know, you will get an accept or a reject within a certain bounded time frame, etc. Rather than some of these projects, which kind of drag on and drag on and can't find sponsors and this and that. <clears throat> so. Uh, it, the, the document's not ready for broad review, but hopefully it will be within the next week and we'll send it out to the mailing list. But it, it is, there is a first draft of it out that, that uh, Aaron's just tidying up for general consumption. Uh, anything else that anyone wanted to cover before we wrap up? Uh, so there's only four of us left. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. If that's it, thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you again in, uh, I think it's two weeks. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.